Welcome back to Wit Acres. Today we're gonna do a garden tour. Let's go. So I just planted a lemongrass here and Echo Pup's laying in the rest of my garden. Stain. Out. Try and get them out without damaging anything. But I'm here on the edge of the pond that we are constructing this year. Trying to get some plants around it, make it look good while it's still under construction and not full of water. This lupin's putting on the best show it's ever put on right now. I have a row of impatience in the front. And then we have the columbine that's finishing up. It has been blooming for a couple weeks and now it's going to seed. I do let it go to seed because I do want all, all the volunteers. Like there is one right here that's already blooming that I'll be able to take out and plant after it's done blooming. I'll be planting it out in the island garden, but this lupin, look at it. Does it get any better than this? It is full of color out here. I believe this is more than one plant that I direct sowed, direct sown, that I have sown directly years ago. Probably about four year, three years or four years at this point. I just threw a bunch of seeds on this bank and this was the only perennial and it stayed. So it's doing really well. I don't even know how many blooms are on it, but it's making the pond out here look beautiful. So after this log here, we have some Vista bubblegum petunias that I like using every year because they're real vigorous and they fill out the whole area. And then we have some Creeping Jenny here on the edge, giving some yellow color. Behind that is a new plant that I got this year. It's a perennial. It's a uh, Lithodora and it has nice little pink blooms and a kind of a succulent style leaf so I like to put I like to put that out here because it's gonna be a rambler or a spreader so it's gonna expand probably uh, expand those two clumps together and be one here next year and then I put the lemongrass in there for some different texture I have a whole tile of sedum that I have for putting in little areas once I'm done and actually finish edging this pond Underneath my hose, getting crushed, is a basket of impatience that I'm gonna be using for different spots of the pond once it gets closer to filling up with water. It's slit, need to tighten that rock up. But we have another creeping jenny on this side with the vista petunias again to keep some consistency. And then we have a beautiful gladiola coming up. This is gonna be a large red gladiola and a dandelion but this gladiola did a really nice show last year so i'm hoping it does it again this year it looks healthy put a hosta there that'll fill out uh right at its base and then we have some volunteer sunflowers coming up in here which i left go and hopefully they'll be i believe they're a short sunflower so they're just going to put on some yellow color out here without getting too tall behind that i plugged in a couple giant zinnias for the back row and then a little drift of annual dahlias that seem to be taking and they're looking really nice on this side next to this grass or that's not supposed to be here yeah you're not supposed to be in here there's a bunch of that coming up but there is some more lupin coming up here as i weed some of this grass next to all this uh cosmos a bunch of cosmos coming up and then more lupin is mixed in there as well so I'm gonna leave those go and hopefully that's lupin's gonna fill out this area and give me a lot of uh, color underneath the hook here. This is a buried treasure strawberry from Proven Winners and it is putting on fruit. So I can't wait to get these. Hopefully I can get them before the birds do. I don't actually, I don't see any that are ready yet. Look in there, I thought I saw something red, but nope. Echo puppy, you just waiting on the stone. You're so cute, buddy. Around the focal point rock that I plan on putting a statue or something on is a bunch of portulaca. I'm trying to get it nice and tight so it's kind of like a ground cover. It goes all the way around the stone. And we have one bloom already starting. That's a pretty nice color right there. These are going to be all mixed colors, so I'm not sure what pattern we're going to have, but hopefully we'll have a nice ground cover. The Budlia survived the winter, and it's coming up right now. And then I have another a drift of giant zinnias next to a hosta that's... We actually dug the pond around the hosta. We tried pulling them all out, and this one stayed there. I found it underneath the liner after winter, and it was all white. 
and then I got it up and out. Now it's a nice bright green and it looks healthy. So it's gonna stay right there and I weave the liner right around it. So I like it. It'll be blooming this year, I'm sure. You can see some water flowing. I just took a old fountain pump, put it into a flower pot full of pea gravel, the river gravel, and turned it on just to get some water moving in here, just so the water's not all stagnant and stale. I actually think I saw a frog jump in off that rock right there a little earlier. It's a little uh, hard to tell in this water right now because we just had some rain and it's all filthy. But I'm trying to keep it from getting too stale with that fountain pump going. You can see the rain starting so we'll try and get this garden tour in before it gets too heavy. Off the patio the nine bark here is beautiful putting on a lot of blooms this year. It's actually very full. I don't think it was, was even this full last year. I have a lot of dead branches I need to come in here and cut out of there. Just haven't got to it yet. Looks like we definitely have a robin's nest in here though. I just scared her out. So let's take a peek and see what she's working with. Looks like she has at least two eggs in there. That's all I could see but yeah, that's nice to know. I like finding all the nests around here. We have some in the honeysuckle up by the pergola too we'll get to. I was working on this edge along the driveway this week. I got this cream, I forget what the name is, but it's a cream type of uh, daisy. And that's a proven winner's one right there. And then there's a poppy coming up next to it. We have the variegated hosta. And the blue fescue and the dianthus are looking really good right now. This is its time of year to shine and it's looking great. I put in a white marble pathway to get in and out to the driveway right there, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. Rain's picking up a little bit. Out here on the shepherd's hook, I got a red begonia that's just popping with a lot of color. It's a variegated leaf too, so it has a little bit more interest. And then right next to it is just a full New Guinean patient that my brother got my mom for Mother's Day, and it's looking good out here. Got the rest of the driveway out here composted and it's looking nice and tight with it being weeded. Got to finish up this area and make a nice little curve around the new yellow maple we put in this uh, spring. But it's looking really nice. I like the color out here. We got the dark red maple and the yellow maple and then the green poplar along the driveway and I like the color combination. You coming out puppy? Come on bud. I also put in another marble pathway to enter the driveway on this side too. So it matches and this whole side is looking really nice with the uh, compost on it. And they're all going to be blooming at different times once that dianthus is done. The hostas will be getting close and then the lilies. I think it goes in that order. But I like to keep things uh, sporadic so there's always something blooming in an area that, at some point. I also have a nice big daylily. So maybe the daylilies are first because look at that. It's already putting on a, bo a bloom. So we also plugged in a new hosta here and we have some red sedum along in here. Carl Forrester grass that's getting all taken over by pokeweed. I just haven't had time to get to this bed here. Out here at the food forest, I was able to do some planting today. So you can go over to our nature, Wood Acres Nature at Home channel and check out the, any of the planting that gets done here on the property. But we got my zinnias in nice little drift for the pollinators along the whole outside there i got the potatoes planted and they're already strawed so they're ready to start popping up i believe i already see one boom look at that potato popping up that is good to see hopefully it'll be all popping up after this rain here along the line of trellis i had for tomatoes last year i did it again and put in some more tomatoes I also put in a jaguar marigold on each end of the row and one in the middle for color and pollinators and for pest control. Now the one thing I didn't do is harden off my plants this year. So some of these are looking a little droopy and lifeless but I'm hoping that they'll be okay because I planted them during the hottest part, part of the day so uh, that was probably the biggest mistake but it also got cloudy and kind of rainy for today so Hopefully they'll get a little briefment and then uh, they'll be able to take off afterwards. On the very end I put in a blueberries tomato which is a little uh, cherry style or grape tomato style. 
and uh, it has a little bit different flavor. So blueberries tomato is pretty good. It doesn't taste like a regular tomato if you pick it early enough and don't let it ripen the full way. It, it, it's pretty fruity and still has kind of a tart flavor. And I like it for snacking out here in the garden, so I just put one. And then after that, I have 12 Marzano tomatoes going down the line. And they'll be for salsa and paste and soups and anything else that we're going to be smashing tomatoes up for. They'll be perfect for. Right behind that, you can see there's a lemon basil I plugged in there just to have a little bit of basil around the tomatoes. At the end of the 12, picks up six brandy wine tomatoes that I got in and then another lemon basil right behind those with the marigold on the end. I've got my peach tree here. Hopefully it'll start showing some signs of growth and do well. The other one I plugged in here did not, so it already died and had to get rid of that. The chives are looking good. Nice bright purple color. I like having purple all through the garden. It's my favorite color for the garden and the flowers. And we have chives popping up all through the food forest here. And it's just, just looking nice to have these splashes of color just across the whole thing. And it's a nice consistent purple going around this time of year. With the rhododendrons blooming purple, it's nice to have everything else kind of consistent around the property. I was also able to get some peppers out. So over here I have four carnival bell peppers with a calendula in the front. And then I just did these kind of like dash marks or small groupings of the plants to try and leave some walking space in between. Here are two sweet banana peppers and two cayenne peppers with another calendula. And on this side I put four of the mixed bell, mixed bell peppers with a calendula in the middle as well. Calendula or calendula is very good to put with your vegetable plants because it actually has a sticky stem that will trap aphids. And it's also a nice bright color yellow that'll draw in a lot of pollinators whenever peppers and tomatoes don't really have a very large flower. I had to plug in four better boy tomatoes just so I had some of them growing already because my vegetable garden's not ready. It's all destroyed by weeds. But I made this little wigwam or TP, whatever you want to call it, out of bamboo sticks just to give these something to climb up for now. We'll see how I'm going to have to prune these to try and keep them on here. And uh, I don't know how long they're, or how tall they're going to get, but uh, we'll see how this TP lasts. I just wanted to put some type of vertical interest out here in the center. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have to see how it goes. This is my herb garden from last year and it is just blooming up nicely. The chives and the sage is blooming right now. So look at that flower. What an intricate flower. You don't want to let these go to seed so I'm going to have to cut the flowers off as they start to uh, kind of deteriorate and stop being so pretty. So I'll cut them back so they don't spread too much out through the garden. On the back side of the island, this is the first time this plant is blooming. My dad pulled this out of my brother's house up in Buffalo, New York and brought it down because he didn't want it anymore. But uh, we didn't quite know what it was, but we do now. So I believe this is a viburnum. I'm not sure the variety. I might be able to take a picture with the app on my phone and figure that out. But I don't pay for it, so I only have one try a day. And uh, I already used it. So I believe this is a viburnum and it looks really nice. It's a bright color and it has that kind of like flat flowering form, which I don't really have anywhere else. So that's going to be nice. Hopefully it puts on more flowers. Is that the first two or the only two? Hmm. I don't really see more buds. Hmm. Have to wait and see. But that's really nice to see that blooming and now I do know it is a viburnum and these are definitely some big thistles coming up here about the flower as well I got to get those out of there keeping with the purple consistency of this time of year there is a beautiful iris that one's not quite open yet and then this is what it looks like when it opens nice yellow beard in there and intricate veining on the purple I like that can't keep focus on the camera, but this is a nice little patch of iris right here next to the walkway. Coming in, you see more of that color. And laying down, since we just got some rain and some wind, is a very deep, deep purple. 
almost black iris here. I don't know any of the names because I just got these from uh, from friends and other people. I didn't buy a lot of these irises. So uh, yeah, that's a nice uh, blooming iris that just came up this year. I didn't have any of them blooming last year. This is also the first year for this color. It's almost finishing up, but it is a nice different color. Big pop of yellow with the purple. I really do like the yellow and purple combination. So it's really nice to have that all in one. These are the yellow irises that my dad's always had here and I separated out. You can see how much smaller of an iris this is. I'm not sure of the variety difference. I don't know if those are bearded iris and these are flag or some other iris. I'm not, I, don't, I don't really know. Like I said, I didn't really buy any of these. But I separated these yellow ones out into groupings across the back side here. So they're popping off some yellow color right now. Echo Pup, what are you doing in my garden, buddy? Don't step on anything. The rhododendron is looking beautiful right now. Just look how full and beautiful over that bench it is. You can come right in and see all the branching structure when you sit on the bench. And I just love how it reaches out. Got the birdhouse hiding in there. And of course, a bunch of bumblers working. The bumblers love this tree and they're always or this uh, rhododendron and they're always through here buzzing they don't even bother you because they're always working so hard in here and this is just a beautiful setting in here by the bench puppy doesn't like bumblers huh you chase them more purple comes from the periwinkle vine the variegated one i have training up the pathway and the solid green one also blooms purple that I have training around the stone wall here. And they're always blooming in the spring here. They bloom for a long time, maybe even all summer. This succulent that we saw last, last week is all closed up right now because I'm doing this tour in the evening. And this one actually closes and reopens during the day. Some more of the yellow iris is working its way out here past the wall. If I actually had this bed mulched, it would be re looking really good with the contrast, but a lot of weeds are coming up through here and uh, running out of time to get it mulched. It's looking good with the purples, the, all the different colors. I like having the various colors popping up through here and then all the yellow in the back as a backdrop. The alien's finishing up. This is, I believe, wild carrot. That shouldn't be in there. And then we have the purple alium finishing up going to seed and the white alium still blooming, which is just not as impressive as the purple. We also have a bright orange iris right here that's coming up and it has a lot of nice color to it as well. It gives a nice little pop of orange out here where there is no orange. I did just get the whole yard edged and mowed, so it's looking nice and tight right now all the way around. Now we're going to head down to the vegetable garden, which is in progress for the most part. It's not as beautiful as it was last year at this time, and uh, it's definitely not as full, but there's a lot of changes going on down here, so there's still some things to see. So the entrance of the garden here is the main thing that changed. I built a nice gated trellis here that's all out of wood that we had on the property and out of maple tree branches that I pruned this year off of all our trees on the property. So I made the whole trellis out of the branches. We already had all the fence posts that I made the framing out of. And then I made it, obviously this is all maple tree, silver maple branches. There you go, pup that uh, turned into a nice little gate here. So it hits the ground right here. It can open the whole way. And then it hits the ground and then it has a spring hinge that will, uh, it'll, see, it'll suck it shut. So I'm liking it right now. It doesn't have a vine on it. I don't know what vine I'm gonna put on here yet. So I'm just kind of gonna leave it empty and just uh, have it as the wood plain look for this year. And when I figure out a vine, I'll plant a vine on it for next year. I brought the garden bed out and around the fence all the way down to the first gate. I have to get some compost on here and then I'm going to plant it out with some annuals and maybe even some perennials. 
I already got a purple iris plugged in right there that's pretty young but it'll eventually grow out right there we have a hibiscus that is coming up already and I planted that last year so we'll hopefully be getting some nice blooms off of that the red bud tree that I planted here got I don't know eaten by a deer or something but it died and didn't make it I have one that's out front that I'm planning on putting here but it's also well it's doing better than this one because it's alive but it's not doing too good but it'll slowly come back and uh i'll have a red bud here eventually i have an elephant ear planted right here i don't know if it's alive but i put it in hopefully it'll come up right next to that we have some yarrow that i got off of a nice lady but uh i haven't seen it bloom yet so it's kind of small i don't know if it should be bigger at this point or what but it seems pretty small i don't know if it's going to bloom this year this is a black tower elderberry i planted it in the fall last year so we'll see how it does and then i got a chinese snowball bush that i pulled out as a volunteer from behind my compost pile over there and plugged it out here so it can get some more sun and we'll be able to see it a little bit better and another purple iris coming into the garden we have two dianthus that are starting to bloom which are gonna look nice because there's a lot of buds on there so they're gonna be covered in pink here soon I really like the pollinator patch this year it's starting to pop off with the butterfly bush getting real big I love that bird bath that I got in there and we have a lot of gladiolas coming up the hostas really worked on adding some life to this corner while I was working on getting it planted out so I'm glad I got those in as some foundation plants to be coming up before I have time to get anything else in here. I'm going to be shaping the pathway out here once I get the mulch in here and get some things planted. I need some more wood chips before I can really get all this area covered, but I'll have a couple different paths in here going around everything. We have some more purple chives that are blooming down here. It seems to be the only plant that survived in this uh, container garden. In the J raised bed, the onions are trying to survive. They're starting to take hold and some of them dried up and died. But um, hopefully we'll be able to get a good amount out of what I did get planted. I, it took a little bit longer to get planted than I wanted them to, but we're still trying and we're getting as much done as I can. The garlic's looking pretty good. And then I have the broccoli and the cabbage it seems to be taking. They're not all dried up, so they all look pretty healthy. Over here we have the cabbage and the broccoli that seems to be taking. They all look fairly healthy. That is a massive amount of lettuce up there. I need to give that to the chickens. But uh, we also have some marigolds planted down here for some color and everything else you know. Sunflower on the corner, that was a volunteer. I just moved it here. This is the bed I'm talking about moving. It's filling up with weeds right now, but I want to move it over here and fill it up with that pile of compost and maybe get all my Brussels sprouts and some other things planted out in it. But it's super heavy. Like we, that is a real two inch by 12 inch board. It is old oak, I believe, and it's very heavy wood. So kind of need to bring the backhoe down here to move it because it's kind of even sunk in the ground and uh, I can't lift it at all. A puppy, a puppy. Hook a harness to you and have you drag it out. Look at this ball of lettuce. This is tango leaf lettuce that survived the winter and uh, came back. There's ants all over it, but I kind of just haven't harvested it because it just looks so good. I put it in this little uh, trellis thing and uh, it's been growing really well. The high intensity bed grew really well as also. We got some. Uh, grass in here I like to get out of the carrots because this this grass can really root down pretty pretty quickly and take over the bed so I want to get as much of that out as I can every chance I get but if you look in here we have some beautiful big radishes that probably should have been harvested already these things are probably gonna be uh, probably gonna be woody at this point so at least the pigs can get them they like some radishes they won't eat a ton of them but We'll pick at them. So we have a lot of radishes. We'll see what's good for us and we'll try them. And then uh, whatever's a little bit too woody, we'll send to the pigs. And whatever the pigs reject, we'll send to the compost. And then we'll get the compost back in the garden next year. And it'll be a nice full cycle. 
at least I got to grow it and it looks good. If you look in here, you can see we have something growing that is not a uh, radish. That is some type of squash growing in there. And I should probably get that out whenever I harvest the radishes. I also have a ton of red romaine here, some more tango leaf lettuce, some blue curled scotch kale that's almost ready to harvest, and some Swiss chard that's definitely ready to harvest some of those. All this on this end, all the leaves will be cut and come again. So there's plenty of that I'll be able to harvest, make some salads, and give to the animals as well. We also have some beets in here. The puppy's trying to sniff. They're uh, not that big yet. I don't know if they're getting shaded out by everything else. I think they are. I think the parsnips and stuff are shading them out. I need to get in here and do some pruning. But I kind of fall uh, prey to just looking at it. I grow all this stuff and then uh, I end up just looking at it and I don't want to cut it down because I worked so hard to get it to this point. So then you end up with uh, woody radishes and uh, bitter greens. But hey, at least the animals would take it. Over here on the asparagus bed we have some peas popping up. I'm sure there's some peas that are ready. They're just starting to put on some uh, meat in there, some bulk. But the rest of them, you could take some pea shoots. What do you smell, buddy? You smell anything in there? Don't break anything. There are a bunch of weeds and a couple more peas coming up. The asparagus is all ferned out, though. So this is why I planted my tomatoes and peppers up into the food forest. It is because this area is not ready to be planted. All of the worst weeds that we have on the property seem to be down here in my pumpkin patch. So I did come through and spray everything. That's why it looks like it's starting to die off. But this stuff does not die easy. So I'm probably going to have to come through, spray again, and then wait out some time period before I can come in here and actually compost and plant it. Which I'm running out of time because my squash and pumpkins are up in the greenhouse and they are ready to come outside. I need also to come through here and get this area ready. This is my squash mound. And it's not quite ready for any planting as you can tell. We got a lot of weeds up here. Mostly pokeweed, thistle, dandelion, and uh, what is that? What is that one that's got that ugly leaf? I don't see it right now. Kind of sprayed it down. That leaf right there. A lot of that, whatever that is, burdock or something. So I'm probably going to have to come through, spray this down again, and try and get it to die off before I can go through and plant anything out. This mound kind of got away from us this year, and I uh, probably should use some fabric that, and uh, try and snuff out as many of these weeds as we can. Down here is a new addition. It is a honey locust which is just one tree that I've always wanted to get because it has such bright color this time of year and it lasts for a while during the spring. And it definitely has another type of foliage that isn't too common on uh, a lot of trees. Now my autumn blaze red maple that the deer got did not die. It is coming back and it is alive, but it is going to take a long time to come back. So I'm gonna dig it up from this spot and put it somewhere else to recover because all I want is big trees down this line. So I went out and got a new Autumn Blaze Red Maple, even bigger, plugged it in here, and hopefully I can get some deer protection on the trunk before it is time for the uh, buck to come around and scratch again. Luckily, this swamp white oak is leafing out gorgeously, nice and full, even though the buck really damaged the trunk. Also wanna protect this one as well. You can see I got the fence up around the garden here, got the gates on with my dad's help and we got the garden bed out there ready to be planted out all the way down this hundred foot fence so out here i have a plan for this garden i believe i'm going to be using some of the trees i have up in the nursery i have a tree for the center as a nice focal point and then two shrubs. They're going to be different shrubs that bloom at different times and have different features. But they're going to be two perennial shrubs and a nice focal point tree. And then I'll fill the front in with annuals every year. And this whole row down here with some annuals. But I'm also going to plug in some perennials. 
I already have some zinnias in here. I sowed some sunflower seeds, but I don't know if they're going to come up or not. These are some more purple irises because I like purple and we have plenty of irises around here. I have some more zinnias there and I put in two artichokes down here too. We'll see if they survive. If not, well, I tried. But they do attract the aphids pretty good, so they might just be a sacrificial plant. In a recent video, we also got my dahlias planted out here, the ones that did survive the winter. I didn't have really good success with my overwintering of dahlias. They kind of got really dried out and petrified, so not a lot of them made it. But I got the ones that did make it out here along this side, so they'll be easy digging up in the fall. Some more irises, zinnias, and I don't know if I'm going to have any sunflowers pop up, but I sowed some right there. Echo pup is out there in the south garden and there's a bunch of wild flocks blooming out there This year we also got six of the Norway spruce planted out there the ro uh, rhododendron which is a little one beside the blue flag to the left a tiny rhododendron planted out there Straight ahead is a dawn redwood that's leafing out. The second one that was on the left side died. We got seven on this left side, large maple trees planted out from our grove that we have on the other side by the nursery. Got them out here in the open so they can start leafing out and be nice mature trees. And I think it's looking nice out there. I have to keep the grass cut like that, kind of uh, because I want to. And I think it looks good, but it also is because we have the trees tied up to pipes and ropes and I can't really weave in there and out very well around the trees. Over here we have three more maple trees planted in the long grass out there. They're small, about 15 feet, but 15 feet is kind of a big tree too, so it depends how you look at it. But I think those are going to look nice as they leaf out and start covering and putting some large structure out here in the south area of the property. We also have a large oak tree planted up there in the corner. And I'm waiting to plant out this whole right side all the way to the barn yet. Because we're going to be digging a large field pond out here where we have this hole. And uh, we don't want anything in the way when we're doing it. So holding off on planting out that side but i've been working on getting this side planted out the best i can come on pop now before these all flop over i want to show these irises in full bloom i think that's as many blooms at once that are going to be on these things right now and they're looking really nice you can see them from almost every angle of the property here and now these Vista Petunias I plugged in over here are also going to be filling in. You'll be able to see those from every angle of the property once they get full. But we had some rain and wind, so a couple of these irises kinked and broke over because uh, I'm lazy and did not stake any of them. That would be a lot of work to try and stake all the irises, so uh, they just stay up as long as they stay up. Down in the front here, I put in some French dwarf marigolds, a portulaca, a zinnia, and a small drift of annual dahlias. And uh, the penstemon, still blooming up really nicely. What are you doing in there, pup? You're not supposed to be in there, buddy. It's not done yet. It's not done yet, pup. Have to keep coming out front so I can show off the rhododendrons for as long as possible as they're blooming. I really like the color combination of the dwarf spruce and then the lighter dogwood with the darker green of the stone pine. I think it looks really nice out here. Just getting the yard edge really makes it look a lot better. We have the rhododendron just putting on its biggest show that it can and it is full. I just love this thing. You can see it coming in the road. Get back over here. Come here. Come on. Yeah, you stay here. This rhododendron's just so full and I love seeing it coming in. This whole area lights up whenever you're driving in. This whole area is kind of full of color right now. And that's because of the Chinese snowball bush still blooming back here. You can see all this from the road, so it's nice purple and white. And purple and white's a nice color. I don't know if you can hear all the bees, but they are a buzzing out here. Puppy, what are you doing over there? 
Scotch broom is still blooming a little bit, showing some yellow color. And the Gila bores always look good because they have the seed pods on there now. Even though they're seed pods, they still look like a flower. So uh, they always look good. Been trying to get all the weeds knocked down in this perennial bed area so we can actually see what's coming up. The barberry has some good color. This is a jagger bush, isn't it? Yeah, I have a jagger bush coming up. Look at those thorns. Why is that here? That is in my little patch of carnations. Ooh, check it out. Peony time. We're getting a lot of peonies coming up. My liatris is starting to bud up here. I'm trying to get these to get healthy and then I can spread them out as well. We have a Shasta Daisy popping up, getting real big this year. I'm trying to knock some of the weeds down with some spray along the field because there is a ton of poison ivy in there. And I get poison ivy pretty bad. As you can see right there, it is the shiny leaves of three. And uh, yeah, I can't go in there and weed whack and get poison ivy all over me. I'll be, I'll be incapacitated. A couple blooms left on the uh, woodland flocks here. Look at the color of this barberry just popping off here I want to get it a little bit bigger and then actually start to shape this thing oh got some more peony coming up back here this is a new one this one I don't believe bloomed last year it is a bright white like a super pure white with the red center I like that one another one over here look how pink that is real blushing pink and then it opens up with the pink outer nice creamy inside and then a red dot center that is a nice peony we have a nice big one of these up by the uh, pergola i'll show you still working on expanding the garden out here in the front we have i got the blue atlas cedar in and it's looking bright and colorful we have some irises blooming out here as well and then this is the red bud i was talking about putting next to the garden entrance see how it only has a couple branches and they're all on one side of the tree but uh either way i think i can make that work down the garden got cleveland pear, cleveland pear flowering that is new this year hopefully it gets nice and big and starts blocking off all this open area in the front i did get the hollies and the hydrangeas all weed whacked around all the way back to the lilies and the fence line and it's looking real nice we had a holly die out of the five I put in here last year. One died, and the rest aren't looking too great, but they're still alive. Hydrangeas look really good. The limelight hydrangeas look real nice. All the way down with the yard edge, I like it. Get some mulch down here, and I'll be set. But since that holly died, I decided to plug in a big old red oak right here in the front yard. We lost a massive maple tree, and that's why that garden's getting made there but I wanted to do something else real big out here, so big old red oak. Over here in the corner garden, it's completely overtaken by weeds, but some things are still coming up, and the viburnum out here is blooming. We have a, this is a, I believe it's arrowwood viburnum, and it is the blueberry muffin, proven winners, and uh, it is setting off a lot of blooms. I don't know if I have another arrowwood. I'm not sure if, uh, the one that I got from my brothers is an arrow wood or not so I don't know if this will actually pollinate and put on the blueberries in the fall it didn't last year but the other one also wasn't blooming and I'm not sure if it's close enough either a lot of questions but either way it still puts on some nice white blooms for the springtime or early summer and this one is covered in them I have little volunteer oaks all around the property and I do say try to save some of them for uh, future use in the landscape. I have one of the hollyhocks coming back from last year and uh, we'll see what that does. My royal empress tree is alive out here in the front and it's leafing out all the way to the top. This thing is going to be massive this year. I do want to trim off some of these lower branches. I just cannot bring myself to cut this tree. It's doing so well, but I think if I do prune it, it will help it out. I tried to leave it on as long as I could to let it bloom if it wanted to bloom. So far, none of those open. So I'm thinking that they all got frozen out, but um yeah hard to tell there's still a bunch of them on there 
Maybe it's just not warm enough. Really haven't done anything out here in the front yet, so there's not much to see. Just pretty much edge of the yard. We do have some pretty big peonies out here in the front though that are putting on some buds. They're just not ready yet. My crepe myrtle that uh, I thought was gonna be real nice is restarting from the ground. So I'm still gonna have a multi-trunk crepe myrtle. It's just going to be a lot smaller than I purchased. Out here at the mailbox, it is looking full this year. We got a nice big clematis climbing up, putting on a ton of buds right now. So that's gonna be blooming here in the next couple weeks. Big old hosta carpeting phlox is coming up too. And then I have a bunch of uh, volunteer morning glories that are popping up all over the place that'll be climbing this and blooming after the clematis is finished. I have a little knockout rose blooming. That's nice. And a big old dianthus that just looks beautiful on this corner. Like that's 10 inches. And that's a big old dianthus. It's only about three years old, I think, but look at that coverage. Just gorgeous. Net right next to the burning bush annual that's bright green right now. That is nice. You just gotta ignore all the weeds and uh, pretend that there's mulcher. What are you doing, little birdie? What are you doing? Right under the hemlock here, we have a bunch of volunteer burning bush coming up, which is looking really good. This is just what I wanted for it to all come up in a ring. I have to do some weeding and a little bit of help to try and get it to fill out this ring this year, but I think it's going to look really good either way. And the wagon wheel just looks nice. Just pretend there's mulch there. In the front here, I plugged in a couple marigolds. I believe I even plugged in a cabbage here. A couple marigolds and cabbages along the front here. I don't know what they're going to do, but they're in there. The hosta bed is looking very nice this year. The Empress Wu is actually getting very large and filling out. And then all the different colors popping in through here. The little white filigree hosta doesn't get very big right now. It needs a, it needs a little bit more time than these other ones, but look at this garden. Looking real nice. Puppy. This is my Holden rhododendron that is finishing up its last blooms. Some are a little bit darker pink, some are lighter, but it is just about done. Oh, look how dark that one is. That is a nice color there. Why wasn't the whole plant this color? But I'm gonna have to move that rhododendron. It is too small for that location. Those hostas look really good though. This purple passion or purple paradise looks really nice. I need to cut that dead branch off. I just have not gotten to it. I'll prune these rhododendrons all back after the bloom cycle, so I'll get it then. The rest of these purple ones are looking real good. Full color, just a beautiful rhododendron and it's purple so it fits in nicely out here it still be starting to put on some buds so that'll be coming soon puppy i guess we gotta go this way got some more eggs in the boston fern here out front pretty sure those are finch eggs in that boston fern but up here in the honeysuckle these are robin eggs oh she just flew off that's her right there that's Mama Robin, and uh, let's see how many eggs she has. Ooh, looks like she has three eggs. So she's got three eggs in the honeysuckle. It'd be nice if that honeysuckle would fill out a little bit more for her, get a little bit more coverage. I know we have eggs in this one. We at least have a bird in here. I don't know what I saw in there. I couldn't see the camera, so maybe nothing, but I know birds are in that one. And there's definitely a bird in this one too, because they fly out every time I walk up. Out here in the pergola, we have a big old peony blooming. Look how glorious that thing is. And they smell great. Oh, they're just beautiful fragrance. And this one is putting on some big blooms this year. It is the second year for this one. I did get this one from a friend. 
I took it last year while it was blooming just like it is now and I just pulled the whole thing out of the ground plopped it right here so I mean it's an older peony but it's uh this is its second year here these few little perennials I have here on the corner I just think are looking nice you have the peony blooming I forget what this is this is like a something star blue star or I, I just don't remember what it is I think the tag is right there and I could probably read it um, okay so clearly it is broken off and uh, it's right there okay we're we're getting closer here Amsonia blue star Amsonia something blue star so that's what that is it was a lot bluer when I got it but now it is kind of muted and uh, pale white but it's still something out here and uh, has some texture to the foliage as well. This lily is growing quite weird. I believe it's a pink lily, Asiatic lily. But look how bright green all these offshoots are right in front of it. It's almost like it layered itself. It's all just one plant, but I think it looks really nice the way it turned out. All right, I think that is all for this one. We're gonna end it right here underneath the silver lace arch, and it's looking pretty good this year. I'm hoping it fills out a little bit more than it is down this side already, but I'm gonna get up here and prune all these wiry, stray uh, vines back and get it all nice and orderly for Memorial Day coming up. I don't know when you're gonna see this video. It might be at plenty after Memorial Day, but uh, yeah, I'm getting them out as quick as I can. There's just a lot going on here on the property. I'm getting out all the videos I can of planting everything. And we also have some animals on the property. So check out our homestead channel, Whitaker's Homestead. And you'll be able to see all the things going on with the animals that we have. Which would be 32 chickens, 4 pigs, 13 ducks, a goose, and a puppy. Puppy, you're usually, he's supposed to be there when I say that. But, um... Yeah, so we have a lot of animals here on the property, and we actually have more coming in June. So uh, stay tuned. Subscribe to all the channels down below. You'll be able to see everything happening here at Wood Acres when I can get it out to you. And if you want to see more of the garden, then stick around because we'll be doing weekly garden tours throughout the whole growing season. You can see me and Echo on the next one. Thanks for watching. Go. Good boy.